talking about index fund, I think a very good case, since we're both Norwegian, obviously you have international exposure when you write for FT. How do you feel the reputation is for the Norwegian oil fund, which seems like a very good case uh, and maybe relatable to the book as well? Yeah, so I didn't mention that. I think maybe I mentioned obliquely in the book. Yeah, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund, the Norges Bank Investment Management, is, you know, to a large part passive for the very obvious reasons that they know. They do have active components, typically in, in certain very specialized areas. Uh, they also, you know, have what they do, they call enhanced indexing, where they think like, look, we are so big and sophisticated with the we can maybe when we know something's obviously dumb, we can sort of take something out. For example, famously, they made a big deal that they took Wirecard, a German fraud, out of the oil fund before it collapsed completely. Um, so it's kind of like indexing with a, it's a, a, a slight overlay of human discretion, as it were. Um, so I think the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund has a great reputation abroad. Um, Partially also one that they've been really good at, though I think this is going to change in the coming years. It's also seen as fairly apolitical. It's not seen as an extension of the Norwegian government, which sounds weird to say that that's a good thing, but it really is. Because you don't want people thinking this is Norway doing something, that there's like some bureaucrat sitting at the finance ministry saying, oh, we should buy X or Y. Uh, it kind of enhances the reputation that they're seen as a neutral sophisticated investor um though again i think just given the scale of it and some of the challenges we either have domestically or internationally and pressures for the fund to do x y and z i think it might be more in peril in the coming years um but it's it's a fascinating institution i agree uh Obviously, you have met so many people in finance. Is there anyone that you haven't met yet that you will like die for have a lunch with? Oh, yeah. Jim Simons at Medallia at Renaissance. He's my sort of um, he's my my white whale. Um, he he was a just fascinating guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was a you know brilliant mathematician, specialized in geometry. That doesn't sound like, you know, we all did some geometry at school, but this is sort of multi-dimensional, very hardcore geometry. He still has like, you know, you know could in theory win the Nobel Prize apparently at some point. Um, but then worked as a code breaker for the, the Department of Defense during the Cold War. Then basically because of the Vietnam War, he cut it, he like caused a bit of a huff, so he got fired. You know, this is a guy that went like motorcycling down all of the Americas into Latin America until they ran out of money and then kind of hitched like all the way home to, to the US. You know, it's a pretty, you know, colorful character, chain smoker. But then he was a brilliant mathematician and thought you could use maths and computers to trade and invest better. And it took many years, but he managed to collect, you know, probably the greatest collection of non-investor investors in the history of the world. And, you know, Renaissance's long-term track record, like Renaissance's public funds, which don't have like all the, the sexiest strategies are in Medallion, it's in-house fund, but still have done phenomenally well, had a stinky 2020, but still, you know, he's just an interesting guy who by far has had made the most amount of money of any investor in history through investing and also is just you know he gives lots of money to democrats he finances scientific studies around the world he's just an interesting guy though you know his chain smoking might be a little bit off-putting i'd still love to have a lunch with the ft with him someday mm -hmm.